Hi guys, and welcome back to um, one of these remote um, flipped learning videos. I did want to give, um, try something new. So you guys are actually accessing this through a website called Edpuzzle. It's actually on um, Schoology. And something really cool about Edpuzzle is I'm able to record a PowerPoint, do everything as I did before, but you guys are going to be stopped in the middle of this um, video and you're going to be uh, required to answer some questions. So today, you guys are going to be able to define important vocabulary words that describe the history and culture of ancient China. And so we are about to dive into some of these vocab words. After I give a certain vocab word, you're probably going to be stopped and you're going to need to answer either a multiple choice or a short answer question. So be ready. There's no skipping these um, questions here. All right. Our first vocab word is... Emperor. An emperor is a ruler that is like a king. So you guys definitely have looked at um, rulers like in ancient Egypt that we called pharaohs or many kings back in Mesopotamia like um, the king of Hammurabi. Um, both the pharaohs and the king like Hammurabi had like laws and, and ruled um, a large tract of land. In ancient China, those leaders, those rulers are called emperors and they rule over an empire. Our next vocab word is dynasty. Now a dynasty is very unique to ancient China. A dynasty is a line of rulers all from the same family. Much like a royal family, bloodline chooses the next who is to rule. So an emperor gives birth to his son, that firstborn son will be the next emperor. Once that firstborn son has a child, that child will be the emperor, and so on and so forth. Again, a dynasty is that line of rulers in ancient China. Speaking of a dynasty, there's this idea called the mandate of heaven. Now, the mandate of heaven is the belief that there could only be one ruler at a time in China. The ruler reigns as the son of heaven. It is given to him by the gods. The gods approve who will be the ruler of China. If a king is ruled to be unfair, he could lose this approval, which would result in his downfall. He could raise taxes. He could uh, enforce strict laws. He could just be a bad ruler, and the gods would take away that title of emperor from him and his family. A little bit more on the government side, it's this idea that's known as the dynastic cycle. It is a pattern of the rise and the fall of dynasties in ancient and early China. Now I'm noticing it's very hard to see what I've written in here, but the dynastic cycle travels in a circle. There is a new dynasty that comes about and they bring in awesome laws, people are happy, China is prospering, but soon problems start to arise. The gods who had given this new dynasty their power go, you know what? You're getting a little up on our nerves. This, your dynasty is getting a little old. We're going to take away the mandate of heaven because of all these problems you have. And we are going to appoint, the gods are going to approve another new dynasty. That new dynasty comes in, makes some changes, but slowly they turn into the old dynasty. And then the, God, the cycle starts back over again. So it's a constant circle of rising and falling. New dynasties and old dynasties and problems and new dynasties and old dynasties. Our, why is it not let me do this? Sorry. The next vocab word is oracle bones. These are animal bones used to consult with the many gods worshipped by specifically the Shang people under the Shang dynasty. 
while there are many oracle bones that have been lost over time, there are still few that we have that can be interpreted today. And they're a way for us to look into the past, into the culture of ancient China. So as you can see, these oracle bones have little writing and inscriptions on them. Soon we're gonna learn what these inscriptions are. But they are written exactly as they're said on bones. This is a turtle shell. We're gonna look at other um, bones of a, uh, a, a ox's uh, leg bone. So they have been writing and consulting with many gods on these bones. Our next word is filial piety. Filial piety. This is the belief that children owe their parents and ancestors respect. Sounds pretty familiar. Ancestors were revered in China and still are even today. They're very, very important, the ancestors and the elders in China. The elderly hold knowledge, wisdom, and poise. This can be seen today as many families in the Chinese culture allow their grandparents to live with them. That's just something very normal where a grandparent lives with you know, the grandchildren because they want that wisdom around. Our next slide is terracotta. Terracotta is a fire-baked clay that made up an army of warrior statues used to protect the burial site of Shi Huangdi. These statues can be seen today in the Xi'an region of China. To be clear, terracotta is the fire-baked clay, not the soldiers themselves. Terracotta is the fire-baked clay. The soldiers are just made out of the clay. Is another really impressive image of these how big grand these this army is. Here's a vocab word we've seen before: the Silk Road. The Silk Road is a series of international trade routes that grew into a network spanning from China all the way to Mesopotamia. The series of routes included both land and sea paths. So as you guys can see, we have looked at this before, this large trade network that allowed different cultures to you know, expand and trade and get new ideas from each other all throughout Asia and Europe. Speaking of which, cultural diffusion. This is the idea, the spread of culture from one place to another. It goes along with the Silk Road. Culture was diffused throughout um, Asia thanks to the Silk Road. You know, Indian culture was mixing with Chinese culture and then mixing with the European culture. And so again, culture was diffused throughout Asia. Our first dynasty that we are going to look at is called the Shang Dynasty. This is the first dynasty we're going to look at. They emerged along the banks of the Huanghe River, the Yellow River, around 1600 BCE. They developed a system of writing used uh, using about 3,000 different characters. Our next dynasty, the second, is the Zhou Dynasty. They came around in 10, uh, 1045 BCE and they overthrew the Shang dynasty and ruled for 2,000 years. The Zhou also developed a, the concept of a strong central government. They believed that central government was the meaning that one centrally located power would rule the entire country. It's not small little tribes or bands of chiefs, uh, that are all fighting all the time. It's one central place that rules all of China. We are going to be looking at some philosophies, not religions, but philosophies. And one is Confucianism. This is the belief that taught how people should respect authority and one another. Responsibilities are in five relationships. You need to show respect between 
father and son. Respect between older and younger brother. Respect between husband and wife. Respect between friends. And respect between rulers and the people that are being ruled, the subjects. Another philosophy is Taoism. This is the belief created by Lao Tzu, emphasized living in harmony with nature and the Tao, which is the driving force that's behind everything. Taoists seek order and balance in their lives by merging with nature, just like a drop of water into a stream. Taoism is where this idea of yin and yang comes about, where there needs to always be light and dark balancing each other. We have legalism. This is the belief that rulers should have total control over all people. It's more of a government and ruling belief. Legalist rulers are often harsh and really strict. Speaking of harsh and strict, Qi Huangdi, this is the first emperor of China who defeated all other Chinese kingdoms in, 2000, um, in 221 BCE. He built a giant palaces in honor, in his honor, and unified the first Chinese empire. Qi Huangdi put his capital city in Xiangyang and then forced thousands of China's most powerful families to relocate so he could keep an eye on them. Again, this harsh ruler forcing people to move. Shi Huangdi. The Great Wall. This is Shi Huangdi's most famous construction project that was made by thousands of poor peasants through forced labor. It was used to protect from invaders in Central Asia. The Great Wall actually stretches 2,500 miles and um, was uh, built well into the 1600s, our time. So the Great Wall of China didn't being stop built until 400 years ago. Here's another really good picture of how long it all is. And our final vocab word, we made it. The Han Dynasty. Peasants from the Han Kingdom overthrew Shi Huangdi to seize control. They brought lower taxes and put an end to all of his harsh laws. The Han Dynasty was the first empire to allow women to rule the dynasty. They were known as empresses. That is our final vocab word, guys. Hopefully you made it this far and you answered all of your questions. Thank you.